Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to look at how to achieve Games Workshop's heavy metal style bases. So let's take a look at the materials needed. We start with a synthetic haired brush here. We'll also need some super glue and the brand of glue doesn't matter too much. The next thing we're going to need is PVA glue. I'm just using Elmer's here, the extra strong formula. And I'll be placing these materials, including the paint, on a plastic lid to a Tupperware. I don't want to put any of these materials on a wet palette. That's just going to mess everything up, so we keep it on something that's more resilient. We also have a pair of tweezers that I'll be using for the static grass. And I'll put a list of the materials used in the description of this video. I know some of you will want to know the exact brands. I have another Tupperware with fine grain sand but I want the Tupperware large enough that I can comfortably dip the bases and bases of various sizes. So you'll notice a few things straight away. One, the base itself is blue, and that's just because I primed the miniature in McCrag Blue, since that's the main base coat color I used, and some of that overspray got on the base, but really any primer color is fine for the base and we use the primer in the same way we use it for any of our painting. It helps the material stick to the plastic, so we definitely want to prime it before we start our basing techniques here. You'll probably also notice that there are rocks attached to the base already, and this is just slate. Slate can be found really anywhere. It's used for a variety of things, uh, including different hobbies, and I'll, again, include a link in the description for the exact slate I used. And we're gonna actually be painting this. I'm using PVA glue here for the sand, but the slate I glued down with super glue and the same super glue you saw at the beginning of the video. Now this space is on the smaller end in comparison to some of the dreadnoughts you've seen in previous tutorial videos of mine. So I'm comfortable applying the PVA across the entire base before I dip. And you see I'm applying some of the glue directly to the base here. That's just because I know the glue on the other side is starting to dry out. So I want to speed up the process and dip it in the sand before it becomes an issue uh, with drying too early. We've applied the glue and now we're going to pop it straight into the sand here. We're going to make sure we get thorough coverage and I tend to put it face down and try to just use my fingers to pile the sand on, shake any excess off. And very important final step is to run your fingers across the rim to make sure you get any of the overflow of the sand and the glue and just clean up those edges. And finally, we get to start to apply some paint here. You'll see it's incredibly watered down we're using the capillary action, meaning I want enough water to basically just touch the very tip of the brush and let the paint naturally spread out and fill in all the little gaps and spaces. Uh, otherwise, we're doing more of a dry brushing or overbrushing technique. And really, I just want to saturate it with paint. This color is Mornfang Brown, and I'll include a list of all the paints in the description so that you guys can use it for your own reference if you're trying to achieve the specific box art and heavy metal look. Now I will say that I usually have the miniature already glued and applied to the base before I begin this process, but I have this giant slab of slate in the middle as you see, and when I am using the miniature on a rock in the center, I will leave the miniature off the base. Um, the super glue actually adheres extremely well to slate. Um, if you're trying to pop it off, it'll, it'll take off a good chunk of the rock with it. So uh, I like to paint it first and then apply the miniature afterwards. I also wanted to make sure that you guys could see from top to bottom exactly what I'm doing for this process. And this is a longer video than some of my previous ones because I figured it'd be useful to show you from front to back entirely how to achieve this look. And I said early on that we were going to paint the actual rock, 
And this is one of those kind of quirky things, I guess, when it comes to miniature painting. We're going to paint up the rock to, to look like a rock. Um, and the reason we do that is because I get to choose the colors we use and I get to make sure that it fits in with the model. I get to make sure that it's uniform across my entire army. And if I want to make any sort of adjustments to the, the color of the rock or anything like that, this is the control I have when we're painting. We shift to a bat in black next, and this color is only going over the rocks. I went back for a little more water here because the first coat I applied was, was definitely not watered down enough. And we want to make sure that we're slightly careful here not to get too much onto the brown. But this is going to be the shadows once we apply the final coat of paint and, and final colors to the rock itself. So next we're going to apply Baylor Brown to the sand. We're using a technique called overbrushing. And my brush here is still damp. I have a pretty good amount of paint on the brush. Um, but similar to dry brushing, I'm really only applying it to the top of the surface that I'm attempting to paint here, and this time being the sand. Um, I really sweep it in one direction, and I'm trying to catch only the very top, like I said. I don't want to get too far down into the crevices. And, uh, you know, sometimes when we're rushing, like you see here on screen, uh, we can tend to pick up some of this, this sand. Um, and this simply happened because I didn't actually leave enough time for the glue to dry before applying all this paint um, in, an, in an effort to, to show this on video for you guys. So that's pretty simple fix. We'll just apply some static grass to that later. And here we're going to apply the main stone color we're going for onto the slate, and that would be Dawn Stone Gray. And this is a really good neutral color. We'll add some kind of different highlighting to this that you'll see later. But we just want to make sure we keep it relatively watered down. We're not trying to cover up all of the black we've already and brown we've already applied previously. So we just want to make sure we do this in a couple layers. And once again, are careful not to get too much onto the, the sand. Because we are doing a base, it's not a big deal if a little bit of the paint gets down on the sand itself, but uh, we're going for two different colors here, so try to keep it relatively neat. We definitely want to hit the underside of the slate rock and get into little crevices, but once again, we want to make sure not to cover up the previous brown and black that we've done for the shading. This is going to give it a more realistic look than if we just cover it completely and saturate the whole thing with, with Dawnstone Gray. And here we're applying our final color to the base, and that's Ushab T-Bone. And we're going to use this color to tie in both the sand and the slate rock. And the way we do that first is by overbrushing again, trying to cover a little bit less than our previous color. And that's going to add some depth to the sand that otherwise wouldn't appear if it were just one shade. Uh, and it's the same thing we're doing on the rock 
you can you can really see some of the black and the brown showing through uh, and you can see the the lighter gray highlights on the edge just from applying the paint carefully there and we're going to use this Ushapti bone in a second here on the rock after we finish applying to the sand and this is going to tie both the sand and the rock together making the whole thing really look cohesive and planned and i think that's the main reason why we paint this rock when we're doing these heavy metal style bases is as painters we want to make sure that everything we're doing is looking like we planned it and like we know what we're doing even if sometimes we feel like that's not always the truth Now I'm applying the paint to the whole rock, but you see I'm kind of directing a lot of it towards the edges because this final shade is really more so to, to highlight and tie everything together. Once again, I don't need to cover over all of the previous steps as we spent a lot of careful time trying to make this rock achieve a certain look and, uh, and we're using a bunch of different colors to do that. So forgive me, I lost the footage of me applying my first layer of steel legion drab around the outer edge of the base, um, but you're going to see me apply a couple more layers here. And the key thing is use a better brush when we're doing this final, uh, this final color around the edges. A better brush certainly than what you use for the base because we're not running it over rock or sand. We're trying to achieve a smooth, even finish to tie everything in. And this kind of creates an effective border that really highlights the, the work you did on the base itself without distracting from it. And I'm using Steel Legion Drab here, which is a little different than a lot of the black rim bases you see. And I think it's a cool look. I, I stole this idea from Darren Latham, who's you know the famous Games Workshop and heavy metal designer and painter. And uh, it's a really cool look and one you see on the box art quite a bit. This step here is going to be completely optional. I found that the rocks I had painted were a tad too bright in comparison to similar rocks on the rest of my army. Um, but the previous look that I had before applying this Nuln Oil was actually a really good look. Like I mentioned, it just didn't quite fit with what I had. So to dull it down a little bit, I'm just applying very, very thin layer of Nuln Oil and specifically to the underside and uh, catching those edge highlights a little bit turning the gray into a more muted tone. And now you see the result from adding the Nuln Oil. We're gonna finish here with uh, our final step of this project, which is applying the static grass. Now you see I have that tub on the left there of the static grass. I'm selectively applying where I think the grass might grow around the rocks. So I also want it to be more or less evenly spread around the base. So I'm applying on either side here in between the smaller and larger rock. I'm going to hit the back side. Sometimes I'll put it underneath if there's an overhang in the rock. And I just want to make it look as natural as possible. We have the glue applied now, so I'm going to take my tweezers and carefully apply the set of grass onto the glue. Notice that I'm just piling it on and giving a gentle tap or pressure from, from straight above. We want the little fibers to stick directly down, that way they're not laying flat. And this is achieved in a couple ways that I'll show you. First is we do the little gentle pats like I mentioned, and we just kind of loosely fill it. I'm going to end up shaking it off and I'm going to then apply a second layer on top 
Um, you see some extra glue sticking through here, so I want to make sure I have good coverage. And then finally, what I'll do to make it stand up is off screen, I'll just give it a little blow to make sure that all the fibers are looking natural and not lying flat like someone just trampled them. And there it is, the finished product. An Evy Metal Games Workshop style base, super clean. And I am gonna leave you with a couple other examples of models I've done using the same technique. And I hope you found it useful and inspires you to try this out for yourself. If you did find it useful, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. This is still a new channel and any engagement helps quite a bit. Mm -hmm.